Hi guys, Richie Bob here. Welcome to the first of what I hope will be a series of pregnancy videos. If you guys are cool with that, obviously I know not all of you will be. Not everyone is into the pregnancy video, that's fair enough. I have definitely enjoyed watching pregnancy videos on my journey, so this is going to be the first of mine. And it's all about how I got pregnant, which sounds like such a redundant thing to call a video because I think we all know how these things happen. But this is, as you can see by the title, how I got pregnant, it's my journey and the losses that I had on the way. So that's the trigger one in there. And this video isn't designed to scare anyone, but hopefully to comfort people. Um, but everyone's journey is different and the journey won't always be what you think it is or will always end up how you think it will and that doesn't mean it won't end in a positive way it just means it might be a little a bit of a windy road getting there so i've been taking notes in my iphone all along the way of what happened when and why certain things happened so I'm gonna go through those because they're a lot better than my memory and that will hopefully bring us to present day or day of successful sticky bean pregnancy which I'm currently on now, I'm currently 20 weeks which is why I'm so out of breath and I feel comfortable enough to be able to talk about this and that's another sad thing about loss is a lot of us go through it quite privately I know I certainly did, I only told my partner Ryan obviously <laughs> Um, I am quite a private person, I don't like to tell anyone anything, but especially when it feels like a failure and I didn't want anyone to know that we were trying, I didn't want people to know we were not succeeding and I wanted to wait until I had achieved the goal to be able to share that there'd been a loss, which I'm fine with, my own personal choice, but I think you don't feel like you have to do that, don't feel like you have to suffer alone. But that that's kind of a nice thing about YouTube and forums, so many baby forums. Like, it's being able to express yourself and express your sadness in a kind of an anonymous sense to people that you don't necessarily know, but still get that comfort and that very niche point of view from people going through similar things, perhaps. Anyway, let me find this note. So we started trying to conceive back in November 2019. At this point I would have been, I'm 38 now, so I, can't I would have been 35 and I just made the decision that I feel like I'm getting to the point in my life now where I need to decide either way and I sat with it for a bit and thought how do I feel either way? Do I want to have children? Do I not? all that kind of thing and then just felt really drawn to having children after sitting and thinking on it and thinking about the things, the personal things that have stopped me and where I am now and all that kind of stuff and it just felt like the right time and luckily Ryan who I've been with for 13 years now was completely on the same page so very very fortunate there that we're both Felt the same, but at the same time, very lucky. So I was on the pill, I was on the Celeste pill, and I'd been on that pill since I was 15, 20 years. And when I looked online at like people's experience coming off the pill and how long they'd been on the pill, that was like such a shocking amount of time to be on it without having a break. And the more that like, just the amount of things that you learn and that you do not know about your body, about how conception works, about the pill until you start trying is unbelievable. It almost sickens me that I was on it that long. I mean, if you're on it, you're on it. That's, I mean, I was just put on it. I never really thought about it. People get put on it. I didn't really think about what it was doing, what it was not allowing my body to do. I didn't realise that my periods were real periods. I didn't realise that I wasn't ovulating. It seems obvious, but I don't know. I just thought, oh, it's just a barrier to stop A reaching B and making C. But yeah, so coming off the pill was something I was a little bit apprehensive about because I had been on it so long. So I was really used to 
knowing when my period was coming, period, knowing exactly how I was going to feel when being able to schedule things and know that I'm not going to be on, whatever. And that was like one of the greatest benefits of the pill. I was also worried about, will I put on weight? Will I get really spotty? All that kind of vain stuff um, that we do worry about. And I don't think it really changed me that much. I didn't really notice too much of a change, but definitely it was so nice to be in tune with my body and to be like, oh, what's that feeling? Oh, why is my womb tender? I, mean, I don't know if that's the right way to describe it, but I would get like a tender womb when I ovulated, so I know I'm ovulating. In fact, I found ovulation more painful than my time of the month. Um, my periods were really small, which worried me. They were only like a day to three days, not very much. That really worried me. I was thinking, you know, you only have so many eggs in your life. Have they all gone? That was another thing I didn't know. And just learning about the ovulation cycle and when exactly you can get pregnant and all that, I was such a learning curve. I got quite invested quite quickly. And I think that's the thing, it becomes quite obsessive. And it's hard to avoid that. I don't think you can avoid that. Unless you've got all the time in the world and you don't really care about when you're going to get pregnant. But I think as we're all leaving it later and later, which is right for us, I definitely wouldn't have wanted to have children sooner. This is the right time for me. And it's all worked out perfectly in its own way. But going through it is hard. And you have to kind of lighten the load on yourself a bit because you've made the decisions that you've made because of your situation and what's right for you at the time. And things change and people change and you grow and you learn and you get a different perspective and that's definitely what happened to me. So after coming off the pill November, I was pregnant by March 2020. <laughs> what great timing that was. And I remember being so happy getting that positive pregnancy test. And so I was someone who would use the ovulation sticks. I was doing all the basal body temperature and all that, but I didn't really get on with that. But the ovulation sticks were great. And then I would symptom spot, which you really can do, I don't think. It's so different for everybody. And then I would test to see if I get that positive test as soon as I possibly could which they say not to do a lot of the time because you could get a positive test and lose it, but personally I want to know. So I tested and I, I mean, I can't even remember the exact timing of that. It's probably in my app somewhere, but I know that, I think that would have been about five weeks pregnant, um, taking the test and then got the positive test we were really excited. Yes, we're pregnant. I remember going for a meal with Ryan's family that evening and knowing we have this little secret and I was so tired. I remember being absolutely exhausted. It hit me like a truck straight away. Exhausted, could not keep my eyes open, but also quite blissful in the fact that I knew that I was pregnant and it happened so quickly and it was great. But then came the first loss. And this was probably, probably classed as a chemical pregnancy. It was hard to tell because my periods were fluctuating in length. The cycle was fluctuating in length and I didn't quite know how long a cycle was at this point. But a chemical pregnancy, if you don't know, is when you get a positive pregnancy, but then your period still comes. So it's kind of before it's latched as a proper pregnancy. That's probably not the way to describe it, look it up. <laughs> but um, I've put here, it, there was immense physical pain. This was probably the most painful of all the losses. And I don't want to appear like a fraud here for saying that chemical pregnancy is a loss. I realise that it maybe doesn't seem like a loss because if you've gone further on in your pregnancy and lost a baby, obviously that is way more traumatic. And I don't want to belittle anyone's experience with that because my losses have not all been chemical, but they've all been early. And I think it would have been so much worse to have been later on, but it's still a loss and it still affects you, especially when it's the first one. Um, even, even when it goes on, it's always gonna affect you, but 
I don't want to belittle anyone else's experience, just just to say that. I get immense physical pain that spread from my thighs to my abdomen as I bled. I remember just lying on a towel, just curled up in pain. It was really, really painful. I mean, I, I kind of got pregnant every two or three months at this point. Maybe, maybe three to five, I don't know, but this is four leading me up to October-ish. 2021. I've put this with the second miscarriage which was a little further on so this wasn't a chemical. There was no pain at all but eight days of constant bleeding and this time I mean TMI there were actually pieces of tissue in there which was traumatic in itself. Then the third miscarriage was strange I've said it was the exact cycle following the last one. I had my standard two day period, which was usually followed by five days of spotting, how annoying. But this time I had two days of spotting, then it went back to a full on bleed. I had tested right before the period and I got a negative. So I didn't know I was pregnant and thought I'd managed to improve my uterine lining and have a good strong period because apparently you can improve it by doing certain things, eating certain things, which I've been trying to do. But apparently this was actually a miscarriage as well. But the pregnancy test was negative. Then I had my period, then I had my spotting and then I had the loss. And I got the positive test because it, it was about the time to ovulate or it was the time that the Clearview test would tell you to start checking for ovulation, which was never the day you would actually ovulate, it would be like leading up. You get so many empty faces, which means you're not ovulating. But this, when I tested, the ovulation test said I was ovulating. And apparently, I don't know how true this is, but if you do that and you're pregnant, they will say that you're ovulating. So I was like, that's really strange. I'm gonna try a pregnancy test. So I tried a pregnancy test and it said positive. And then the following days, it just faded out. And this, because this was the third kind of experience of loss and it was so confusing and I was so out of my depth and the internet was the only thing informing me of anything. Like here it says I got positive tests for a week and a half after the bleeding and then it went negative. So this really messed me up because I didn't know where I was in my cycle. You're also like really anxious, you don't want to miss a month of trying or have anything wrong like staying in where it shouldn't be. So I called my doctor at that point and they took my bloods for everything and they confirmed that yes, I was pregnant and then I had to go back two days later to see if the HCG, which is what they measure to see if you're pregnant, to see if it was going up or down, it was actually dropping. So they confirmed that that was a miscarriage. And the bloods also said I was low on vitamin D, which I think everyone was around this time because We'd all been stuck in because of COVID. We were living in a flat at the time, so we didn't have a garden for outdoor space. We were also in a really busy area, so we didn't go out at all, except maybe on a night when there's no vitamin D. I got a vitamin D supplement, and also they said there was a some might be something wrong with my thyroid, so I need to repeat a thyroid test in three months time and have a scan just to check that everything had gone from my baby housing, whoever's down there. <laughs> the doctor, it was like the doctor in, in Bridlington, they was, it was so good, it was all phone appointments, but he was so kind and really helpful. The receptionists, I do not, I'm, I'm sorry, there are some nice doctors receptionists, but in general, there's a lot of really bad ones. They're really rude and they make you feel like you are a piece of poo on their shoe and they speak to you horribly and you really don't need that when you're feeling, well, whatever you ring the doctors for, whatever you're feeling when you ring the doctors, you do not need a doctor's receptionist. So after that, the nausea lasted for weeks and I managed to get a cancellation to have the ultrasound inside my tummy. So I had one on, I had a notch sound on my tummy after a pint of water just to check everything externally and then I had an internal ultrasound to check everything was gone because when you have a loss sometimes things get left behind and that's another reason why it's important to call your doctors 
is important anyway because they will only help you on your journey once you've had three losses I believe it is here in the UK. So luckily my doctor believed that I had had those losses but I think if you sort of register those losses with them it's then there to tally up. Hopefully you don't have to do that but yeah. Um, so I had that internal trans transvaginal ultrasound which is they use a stick. It's like a stick and then it goes in and then it goes out like that and it's actually not as bad as it sounds it's not as bad as the smear um no i don't want to put anyone off the smear but the smear is like tube in relax you're not going to do it but this is because of the little narrowing of the bit before it comes out it's uncomfortable when the big bit goes through but once it's through it's absolutely fine it's just a bit weird but they keep you covered so you can't really see that they're in there and it's it's sad you're in a dark room with someone with a wand up your hoo-ha and it, you know it's not great but it at least set my mind at rest that I was clear and everything was fine also I meant you know is, is there anything wrong up there no there isn't great but at the same time it's like okay so why is this happening so I called up for a follow-up phone appointment and the doctor told me my results were abnormal in a good way because it was most likely the underactive thyroid um, that's the problem and that's easily fixed with thyroxine. So he was basically saying there is something wrong but we can fix it really easily with this tablet um, which is a really kind way of putting it so it wasn't like well you can't you're not gonna be able to do this like it was like we found the problem and we can fix it. So I thought that was a really nice way of putting it. So then it was like, I can call up to mid December, two months rather than three at first, because he knows how hard it is to wait. So yeah, it was making sure he knows how hard it is to wait if you want, if you're trying to conceive. So, you, but they have to like measure your blood. Um, and so he said, you know, make sure you call after, two months to get it checked again and then we'll know what dose to put you on but then the receptionist blocked me from that again and I ended up having to wait extra which was so upsetting so he said it's best not to try and get pregnant beforehand because of the effect another loss may have on our mental health fair enough so I called at the two month mark and was told I couldn't have an appointment until the three month mark I was laughed at by the receptionist saying it hadn't been that long anyway when it had and as they were looking and they'd actually looked to the date that I had spoken to the doctor not the date I got the bloods done I was so like shocked that they were laughing at me that I just took the date because I was so thinking oh I must have my dates wrong um, and then I came off the call and checked what had happened I thought oh, I did get my bloods done two months ago I can so I called back straight away and then I was told that's the early, earliest one anyway. So, um, and I said, well, can you check and see if there's one at two months? So she just sort of typed a little bit and went, yeah, it's the earliest, okay. And I kind of wished I'd called ahead of the two month mark, but they tell you not to do that. So I had my blood test on January the 14th. I suppose by this point it's 2021 and I was put on 50 milligrams of levothyroxine a day which I started taking on the 20th. Bloods to be repeated April 12th and then thinking everything was okay, carried on trying to conceive and unfortunately we had another loss. This was our fourth loss and to be fair it was probably more timing wise like the first so more like a chemical so a chemical, two miscarriages and then a chemical. I got a faint positive on the day I saw the gynaecologist. So at this point, we'd moved homes, moved to a new area and I started seeing a gynaecologist who at the time I thought was great. And I, I went in there and he was supposed to investigate in why I couldn't conceive. And I went in and said, look, I think I got a faint positive this morning. Took my pregnancy test with me, it was very faint. Um, they say it doesn't matter if, how faint it is, it's a positive was a positive and that really I think depends on what how how faint it's going to be the next time you do it 
So if you do it again in two days time and it's stronger, then yeah, that's good. But if you do it again, it's disappeared. That's not great. So he said he was supposed to be testing me to see why I keep losing babies, but he couldn't do that because I was now pregnant. He said I shouldn't have been trying, but I was told by the previous doctor that the thyroid tablets would fix everything. This gynecologist disagreed, which um, put doubt in my mind of whether this pregnancy was going to stick, and then obviously it didn't. So I believe what the gynaecologist said. My positive, mostly quite faint, but definitely there, lasted about five days and then I had bleeding. My lower back hurts like I've done some extreme power yoga. I read that it's from your muscles working hard to expel the baby or what was gearing up to become the baby. Not too much pain apart from that. I float from sadness to numbness at this point. How will I ever? get excited about being pregnant ever again. Yeah, I think by this point it was just how do you even, how do you even react? How do you even go on? Do you go on? Like all that kind of, all those kind of thoughts, like you're in your head, what's the problem? How do I get there? All my bloods have already been taken. Um, the gynecologist did say at my first appointment, if I was to lose this one, which I did, I should collect the product, as he put it, in a little tub. He gave me a few tubs and he said collect it in this, in these tubs and bring it back to your next appointment. So I was unsure if I'd done it right but I collected any tissue as it was super early and I put it in these pots and then I hid them away so I didn't have to look at them. He also said that he would send a copy of our appointment to the doctor so that if it did happen again I wouldn't have to go to the bottom of the queue, I could just go straight back. Uh, also with each loss I had a dream beforehand that involved blood which is quite weird. I think your dreams become very vivid anytime you're doing anything like this um, especially during pregnancy but also just in your cycle um, and it was definitely telling me things but then it got to the point where I was worrying that if I did dream about blood that I was gonna like lose the baby anyway. I called the doctors after the miscarriage to rebook in with the gynecologist and they said they would pass on my referral. I didn't hear anything back for 10 days so I called back and it hadn't been done. Another example of wonderful receptionist. I had my second appointment with the gynecologist July 27th which was supposed to be like the first one but they couldn't take the test because I was pregnant. It was exactly two months after that one. The appointment was at 4.25 p.m. and I was expecting to have blood tests and an internal ultrasound as I was told I would, which I was like super nervous for because at this time it was a guy doing it. And he also always had a nurse in the room, which set me at ease a bit because I thought, well, she's probably going to be in the room. But he never told you why she was there. Um, and I always find when you go to the doctors, if there's someone else in the room, they'll say, oh, this is a student nurse, do you mind if they sit in? Or, or this is so and so, or, hello, that's it. He never introduced them, they were just sat there. And uh, she found that really off-putting. But instead, I went in just after five, because they were running late, and the whole department was closed by this point, and I was the last one in. They repeated what I'd been told before, and asked if anything had changed and told me that because it keeps happening it's probably an unfixable problem which was so not helpful. But he actually didn't mention the pot product pots at all so I said um, do you, I brought the um, pots in, do you need them because they're supposed to be able to do DNA testing on them to see if there was something wrong DNA wise and he was like, oh no, you were supposed to drop those off of the doctors. So I'd literally carried these things for months. That was really traumatic. When I asked if I was having the blood tests, the nurse said, oh no, not here. It's a little late in the day now. So they gave me some forms to then take to my doctors to get another day, which was another distressing thing because it wasn't my fault. My appointment was so late in the day and also that they'd run over. So that it was a truly unnecessary appointment, which when you're staying in, because at the time the advice was, don't get jabbed against COVID if you're trying to conceive. Then it was, 
don't get jabbed if you're pregnant and we were pregnant on and off so we'd held off on our COVID jabs we weren't going anywhere we weren't seeing any family so just going to a doctor's appointment was a really big deal really scary deal like it is for everybody in that pandemic time so to go when it's so unnecessary when it was literally just something that could be done on the phone I thought that was really irresponsible I cried the whole drive home I will call the doctors tomorrow to arrange bloods being taken and I think I should hear back about an internal ultrasound. It was unclear if it would be a week or weeks when I get a blood test back so I'd had them at this point. Also unclear if we can keep trying and I've got a blood test for August 5th. Okay so I went for an appointment for something else and then at this point I was I had to go for an appointment for something else the doctors and every time I went, like it was just to get my thyroid checked, however, they'd congratulate me for being pregnant and I would have to say I'm not. And they were like, oh, no one's taking it off your file. And I'd be like, oh, they said that last time. Like they just weren't, they were just so, oh, it was so insensitive. I understand you're doing it once and it's obviously not the fault of the person saying it, but then to not take it, remove it from the account then is beyond. I went for my blood taking August 5th. They had no idea why I was there. Apologise if anything's moved there. My camera card has fallen now, the battery light is flashing, so who knows how if I'm gonna get through this video. Quite a chatty one. So this is where it all just started going quite stressful due to the doctors. So I gave the bloods envelope to the doctors. She couldn't read it because he had quite italic writing. She said she had a letter on file from a gynecologist. I didn't get a copy of it but it didn't specify the bloods that I needed. She ended taking up all the colours of the vials, so that she'd covered all bases, and said to call the following Tuesday for the results, which was just under a week. She asked how far along I was, so I had to explain again, not pregnant. She apologised profusely and said it would be removed from my file again. I think she actually did do it this time. August 9th I got a letter saying I needed to have my thrombophilia screening test repeated and to call the doctors. So the first one was done wrong so and, and then this new nurse that took them was like why didn't she just call up and ask? I was like I don't know. She was just we were like googling what they could have written. It was such a mess and all the time having to go back into the doctors again during a pandemic was stressful again and also the letter that I got saying I had to go get it repeated was dated the same the exact same day I actually had the test so they must have known pretty soon that they'd done it wrong and um, on the 16th of August I went for blood tests at 8 a.m they didn't know which ones to take again and the blood place wasn't open to call until nine so they asked me to come back so I had to go back at half past nine um, they took six vials of blood. I called on the 24th of August for results and was given the runaround between the doctors and the hospital. The doctors said you need to speak to the hospital. The hospital said you need to speak to the doctors. It was so stressful I cried. Eventually the secretary said doctor will see me with the results of the test and the scan. I said I hadn't had a scan and she put me through to radiology to follow up but they weren't there. By this point it was so stressful and everything just wasn't aligned between the gynaecologist, the doctors, the hospital. I was waiting for some scan, I didn't quite know why I was having this scan. I called again about the scan and was told it's a long wait, a couple of months. So I stressed my point with the original people um, that I didn't need one because if it was going to be a couple of months then it wasn't urgent. I knew by the one that I'd had in Brid before I moved that that one was to check everything had gone. So that was urgent and they got me in real fast. This one, if it was to check something was wrong with my inside workings, then it didn't need to happen because they'd already done it at this other one and he obviously just hadn't looked or maybe it wasn't noted down, I don't know. And then I called a week later and I was told that my test results and scan was fine. I never had the scan, but I just said, okay. <laughs> I thought, I just don't, you know, I'd, I'd not waited months for the scan. I never got an appointment for the scan. So let's just pretend I had the scan. I got an appointment through to see the doctor in late September, which was then moved to October because he was on holiday. 
couple of weeks later I got a letter saying all my results were fine even though I already knew they were and again saying the scan was fine even though I didn't have the scan. We started trying again in the meantime because I just couldn't wait and I didn't know why I was waiting. The more I thought about it the more I lost faith in this gynaecologist who was also telling us to wait with the jab and you know don't get the curved jab because if you then miscarriage you might think it was the curved jab and, I, and it, that's really held me up um, and given me a lot of judgment from other practitioners because we've waited. So I have had the first one now, we're having the second one very soon, but it's just left me in a bit of a position and I know that the main stress is to have, is to be fully vaccinated, whatever that means now, by a third trimester, which did mean two jabs, but now I don't know if it means boosted as well. And I just feel like that set us back a little bit and made us a little bit more anxious for going out um, and seeing people again, because I obviously don't want to put the baby at risk, let alone us two. So we started trying again and September 25th, I got a strong BFP. It's a big fat positive. If you're on the forums, you know all these, these all the lingo. And this was at 10 DPO which is 10 days past ovulation. I feel super happy and hopeful, even though nothing has changed, I know nothing is wrong with me. And to have such a strong line is encouraging. I'm anxious to get through the period date and beyond, but hopeful. And this was a different feeling. It was so strong, so early, that positive line. And it just was different. And it's hard to explain that, but I think if it had been the same, it would have felt the same, but it just felt so different. Usually they'd be faint, they'd get, they'd get stronger and then they'd get weaker. This was strong, like straight away strong. I'm going to keep my appointment with the gynecologist for now, pregnant or not, just in case, because it was only a week away. I do not want to drop to the bottom of the waiting list if I end up needing it at the same time. I don't want to end up on experimental drugs because this gynecologist was so about experimental drugs. Everything was like, it's probably an unfixable thing. There's some trials going on, you can try this. And that then started to not add up with why are you okay with me doing that but you don't want me to get the COVID jab or not? Like it all just was a little bit unnerving. I called the doctors on September 27th to see if I needed to change my thyroid dosage, my levothyroxine dosage um, because and she she was so nice she said she wasn't completely sure but she's going to check with the gynecologist secretary and told me to keep my appointment with them to get his advice. So, far as I know, that's what she did. I was quite worried about the thyroid because I know that the doctors in Brid had told me it was my thyroid that was stopping me staying pregnant. No problem getting pregnant, problem staying pregnant because of my thyroid, which had been kicked off by the first pregnancy. As far as I know, the thyroid was fine before that because I could definitely tell I had a thyroid problem after that loss in March. I, I was putting weight on despite what I was eating. My weight just went up and up and up. And I felt so tired and it was just different. I just felt really different. So when I eventually got to see the gynecologist again, he had no idea I was pregnant. They, I, I don't doubt that the message was passed on, but he'd been away again and he didn't get the message. Um, he was trying to get me on some experimental treatment, even though at this point I was pregnant. He got, went through how the trials had gone and how cheap it was for the NHS versus the cost of miscarriage. That was insulting to me. Like, not that I don't care about the NHS, but like, I'm just, I was someone who had just conceived after four losses. Why do I care? Like, but I don't think my, like, it very much distressed me that it was, he just went straight into, we can get you on this, we can get you on that. And I started thinking, well, why? My, um, all my losses had been either chemical or at six, seven weeks. And the drugs he was trying to get me on were issued, uh, one was after 12 weeks and one was after eight weeks, I think. I said I was concerned about my thyroid and he said it's not an issue until after 12 weeks. 
which is completely wrong. If you go on the thyroid, official thyroid websites, they will tell you that the minute you get pregnant, you will probably need more thyroxine. And this, this worried me a lot because I thought it, it, it didn't even acknowledge that the thyroid was a problem, but I knew it was. It was the only th clear thing that happened through the whole process. So he suggested baby aspirin. He said, maybe you should go on baby aspirin even though you've tried it before. I hadn't tried it before. I've never tried anything like that. It starts at week 12. I, it was like he didn't know where I was. <laughs> I was given loose instructions and I left more worried than when I went in. Two nurses sat in the corner and whispered between each other about something unrelated. I don't know who they were, why they were there. I agreed to the prescription. Um, so I, I took all the prescription. He gave me a prescription for progesterone suppository and uh, whatever you call a vagina suppository and he gave me the baby aspirin prescription and I picked them up but I did not use them. Maybe that's stupid, some people will need them but I didn't understand why I was being treated for something that occurred at a week or started at weeks that I had never been to before and I, and I think you've got to just really listen to your intuition and yourself and be prepared to live with consequences if you're not right. So I did a ton of research and also looked at the side effects because I said are there any side effects? He said no absolutely none. Obviously there are because there always are and some of them are like brain bleeds and things like that. To me that's quite a big side effect so I made the decision not to take these drugs. Um, I feel so much better this time around. The only thing worrying me is my thyroid and no one seems to know or care about it. I should have had an endocrinologist but no one was giving me one. I don't know how we're supposed to get one. The whole appointment was a waste of time and once again in a pandemic an unnecessary face-to-face -face appointment. I don't doubt that my doctor passed on his, the message of pregnancy to his secretary but I do doubt that she passed it on to him. His explanation was that he'd been away for two weeks. I am now five weeks pregnant. He said to book in my pregnancy with the midwife but I had no idea who to call and that that wasn't automatically done when I told the doctor I was pregnant initially. This is another thing. People go through pregnancy very little in their life. Once, twice, maybe a, maybe a few for a few, but it's not often. And the fact that you the, the doctors and the system think that you know what to do and who to call when just baffles me. <laughs> if I hadn't been told that, to do that I wouldn't have even known, it hadn't been done and the carer was missing out on. I called the doctor and the receptionist gave me the number for the midwife. I dread seeing that gynaecologist again almost so much that I want to call another area's midwife. I'm about to die and this is slowly becoming the longest video I've known to man. But let's continue. So I called the maternity unit on the 6th of October. This is to register my pregnancy. The lady asked if this was my first child. I said yes and she called back later to say that I said this was my first pregnancy when it wasn't but actually she'd asked if it was my first child so that was like really finicky, not a good start. Anyway, now the midwife knows that I have had four miscarriages, if that's what they were at this point I'm not getting any straight answers from the people inbred to class it as three then I went on to have four. I would probably say two miscarriages, two chemicals. Who knows how they count them anymore and if one affects the other. I have no idea still. I was given an option between two hospitals and one would be covered by the gynaecologist that I do not like. So I chose another one which I'm very happy with and hopefully it means that I won't see that guy in college again. I did mention it to the midwife when I met her that I had bad experience with this person and that I would hope that I wouldn't see them again so hopefully that will happen. And it's literally the first thing they ask you when you call up to book your pregnancy is where do you want to give birth and it's like I don't know I just I've just realised I'm pregnant, I'm still adjusting, even though this was something that we were trying to do. I thought that was a really crazy 
like first question i get that they need to know that but it was just like very full-on we need to know who's caring for you kind of thing so that was all booked in all in the roster now great healthy pregnancy thank goodness i'll do other videos on that and it's all successful but i was still very worried about the thyroid and not having the blood test so i did call my doctors and tell a little fib and say that my gynecologist had said that I needed to get a blood test straight away. Could I have one please? And they were absolutely fine with it. I went for my, I went for the blood test and she starts looking on the system saying, hmm, how, why are you getting this blood why are you getting this blood test? And I said, my gynecologist um requested that I get it because of my thyroid, my levels need to be checked ASAP. And she was like, oh yeah, it says they don't need to be checked until the 12th week mark unless needed. So it's like, well, how do you know that it's needed unless you check the levels? So she she did it um, and she was absolutely fine. She didn't question it. And I did mention to my midwife that I'd told a little fib and she had a student with her and the student actually said, you've got to trust your own instincts and do what you think is right. And it was the right thing because those that blood test came back that I needed to increase my dosage ASAP. And who knows what would have happened if I hadn't. Like that literally could have led to a miscarriage. I've recently listened on Audible to the what to expect when you expect him book and towards the end he even mentions that thyroid is critical for keeping your baby inside of you. But especially up to the 12 week mark where it relies on your thyroid and if you can't even function for yourself you're not going to be able to function to carry another human so I was just so glad I did that and on the website that I got the information from I mean it said it everywhere but there's an official site that I found where it said to get it checked every six weeks every four to six weeks during the first half of your pregnancy um, and I'm just gonna gauge it from there and see what information I get, but I'm doing it completely off my own back. I just call my doctors and say, I have to have my thyroid test because I'm pregnant. And because they're ill-informed on it, they'll just do it. But at the end of the day, it's all on these official thyroid websites that this is what you need to do. Um, by experts, not just people in forums. But I guess some doctors know about it, some don't. And that is totally understandable. Not every doctor can be an expert. But to discard it the way the gynecologist did, I thought was just completely out of line. And I'm so glad that I listened to my inner voice and got that blood test and got the dose that I needed to be on to stay healthy happy, full strength and to provide what the baby needs throughout the pregnancy from me. So the rest of my notes are all about this pregnancy and I'll get to that when I talk about um, maybe my first trimester symptoms and things like that. Those kind of videos, I love watching those so uh, definitely will do those videos but thank you so much for sitting through this video. I hope it has brought you some comfort in knowing that you can get pregnant after losses, giving you the courage to call the doctors and look into it, persist with the doctors, also trust what you're telling, what you're hearing in your own head and speak to different doctors and different professionals if you can. Read things online, obviously there's a lot of rubbish on there, don't just take things as you see them but those forums online are a collaborative hive mind of people who've gone through multiple experiences already through many years so it's really invaluable but anyway um i hope you enjoyed this video about my journey to this point or to a successful pregnancy baby bop is cooking away sounds awful and i'm gonna go and have a nap now because i'm exhausted <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this and all that was. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.